Good morning, folks. It is Saturday, May 16th, and today would have been the classique, but sadly, because of the COVID, uh, all of that has been cancelled. So I am heading out to ride, well, I won't be riding with, I guess, I'll be riding near Ivan and Mark, and this will be the first ride of the year. Yeah, pretty sad. Normally we would be out sometimes in March, certainly in April. And now here we are halfway through May. So uh, it looks like a beautiful day. So uh, we're all geared up and we are heading out. I'm gonna meet Ivan near his place in Vaudreuil and then we're heading out to La Chute. Let's hit it. Well, I guess I don't need to tell anyone what a strange year 2020 has been. Normally we would have been out many, many, many times, but Montreal was really the epicenter of the COVID outbreak in Canada. And uh, right near my house is where a lot of the old age homes are situated. So it was uh, not very pleasant. Uh, my neighbor Ron is a nice guy. He doesn't mind me cutting across his lawn when the wife parks her van a little too close to my truck and I can't squeeze through. So as you saw in the intro, the plan was to uh, head to Vaudreuil, which is just off the island of Montreal, meet up with Ivan, and then uh, Mark would be up at his cottage, not far from La Chute. So we would head up there and ride around and just try to uh, shake off a bit of the cobwebs because uh, other than a few jaunts around the neighborhood, I had not been out at all on the 701. I arrived at Ivan's just as he was rolling out his uh, 690 with the rally kit. And you can see she is all shiny and basically brand new because Ivan doesn't just throw his bike into storage like the rest of us. He spends the winter wrenching on his bike and he had just put on a brand new sticker kit and uh, yeah, the old 690 was looking real good. Now, if you've been following the awesome players for any amount of time, you know that we all jumped on the Senna intercom bandwagon many years ago. And of course, this is like the uh, DeWalt Makita Milwaukee power tool kind of deal. Once you buy into a family, it's really hard to change because compatibility between systems is pretty crappy. So we are with Senna for good or for bad. And uh, having intercoms has added a whole new dimension to our rides. It's great. It adds a whole other level of safety and entertainment, but it's not always smooth sailing so of course over the winter everyone has updated their firmware a lot of things have changed with senna so we are going to have to spend a bit of time to get things working and after updating apps and jerking around and doing whatever long story short i won't bore you with all the details it just didn't work there was some issue with the firmware on my unit so we decided screw it let's get the hell on the road Next on the agenda was heading up to Mark's cottage, where uh, we would then figure out what to do with the rest of the day. And we would then uh, cut across the bridge at Hawkesbury. And eventually, on the other side of Highway 50, we hit the dirt. And after a short hop, we would be at Mark's cottage. And uh, I've got to say, it's, uh, it's a little bit weird to be on gravel for the first time of the season. You've just spent uh, months and months stuck to the asphalt without a lot of slipping and sliding. So it takes uh, a little bit of time to uh, get back in the groove. And a lot of the times when you first start off in the spring, you've got some new tires. And I find with the Dunlop D606 tires that I like to run, it takes a little while for those corners to wear off and the tires to settle down. And there is Mark. We got to Mark's cottage, and there you can see his uh, Africa twin 
And of course, Mark. nobody knows quite what to do now. We've all been locked up in our basements for months. So we did the old elbow bump, which uh, I guess does bring us slightly closer than the government mandated distance. Good day, sir. But whether it's the elbow or the fist nice bump, uh, it was kind of nice to see uh, somebody else. There you can see that wire coming off my helmet. That's because I was trying to run this external power system so I wouldn't have to keep yeah. changing the battery every 45 minutes. It's not very often that I bring the drone on these rides because it always turns out to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to whip it out and plug in the phone and get it synchronized and recalibrate the compass half the time. And if you're in the middle of a ride, it's not the kind of thing that uh, you can do without kind of breaking the flow. So I did bring it on this day because we were just uh, not going to be in a big hurry. So here you can see the area around Mark's Cottage. And as you can see, the leaves aren't quite on the trees yet. And things are still looking a little bare. How's the angle of my dangle? It's good. Good. So Mark is going to take us out the back way. The secret route. After a few minutes of chit chat, we mounted up and we headed out from Mark's place. Oh, yeah. And whenever we leave Mark's place, he always takes us on his super secret little single track trail that leads you out. The back route with a whole bunch of marks. The marks that leave a mark. Now you may notice here, you can really hear Ivan well. And that's because while I was wasting my time trying to figure out a way to power my GoPro from an external battery while maintaining the waterproofing, Ivan wired up a system where he could talk into the GoPro and also pick up the sound from the speaker in his helmet. So you can actually hear Ivan pretty well when he's not going too fast. And it worked so well that I gave up on this whole idea of powering my helmet from external batteries and all the cables and connectors because it just was a pain in the butt. And I too whipped up one of these systems with a microphone so that uh, we could really capture the intercom more. And you'll see a lot more of that this season. Oh, and this is another trail because normally it spits us out onto the road actually, so you don't have to go through this gate. <laughs> wow, this is a bit interesting with the knee braces. All new. As you just heard Ivan mention, he's wearing knee braces. Mark is also wearing knee braces. Uh, Mark's were supplied by his insurance company after the good old socialized medicine system here in Canada rebuilt his knee. And uh, that's one thing I think you'll find is that pretty much all of us now are wearing knee braces since uh, there's been a few incidents. Oh shit, this is the big mud hole. I thought it was on the other part of the sixth concession. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Really? Not too bad. Funny how a trail can change from uh, year to year. This mud hole had been a total disaster at one of the classics with everybody getting stuck. And today it was a piece of cake. <laughs> Yeah, it's been worse than that. You can see here we're riding down a variety of trails. These are pretty familiar to us. These are quite often included in a lot of the local events like the Classic. And as you can see uh, on the side of the road and in some of these puddles, there's still quite a bit of moisture. So the uh, spring runoff hadn't quite all been absorbed yet. Although we are in May here, so there's no snow, not even in the shadowy areas. What is that going to be? The mine? Well, I think it's going to be houses. Houses? Really? I think so. Eventually, we ended up on the Scotch Road. The Scotch Road is familiar to anyone around Montreal who does dual sporting because whenever you ask on the internet when you first buy that bike, where can I go riding? The Scotch Road always comes up because it's really the nearest spot to Montreal where you can access some gravel, or some and some interesting little trails and a sand pit and all that. But 
This year we could see there were changes happening. Uh, some machine had been brought in and had smashed down all these little trees on both sides of the trail and we could see surveying marks and some new driveways so we knew this was about to become cottage country. And as you can imagine, that's not very good news for people who like to do off-roading because a lot of this land has just kind of been open for us to use. But uh, I'm sure once there's uh, 50 cottages along this road, that will change. You could also see that some money had been pumped into this road. Yes, it looks a bit squishy and stuff here, but a lot of the times this road can be really rutted out. This downhill, and once again, the GoPro always makes it look flat. This is a pretty good downhill, has been in much worse shape. But apparently it was still in bad enough shape that this poor fellow had had a crash. And we could see by his riding gear that he'd had a bit of a slide. Hello, ça va? Ah, t'es tombé? <laughs> His only damage was a bent shift lever, so uh, we stopped to see if he needed any help. And in a few minutes, everything was organized and he'd managed to uh, get it back into position. So we were on our way. So we continued down the Scotch Road and the carnage was amazing. I don't know what machine they brought in to do this, but uh, it just kept going on and on and we could just see more and more indications that things were going to change drastically on one of our favorite roads. We got to the little sand pit, so Ivan and I decided to roar around a bit. Uh, Mark if you'll remember from last season, right near the end of last season, he had totally destroyed his knee. So he was driving around here with uh, some cadaver ligaments and a knee that was all rebuilt. And I think he'd also pumped quite a bit of rehab time into it. So he was not going to be doing anything too crazy here right at the beginning of the season. Of course, being one of the first rides of the season, everybody was rusty. And here you can see Ivan had a little fall, which uh, probably wouldn't have happened if this had been a little later in the season. <laughs> so Ivan and I zoomed around, and then once again, I pulled out the drone to get some shots. And yeah, the, the drone really does give you that different perspective on the terrain but it still just kind of slows you down when you're on a ride. Um, so every time I watch a video that's got tons and tons of drone footage, it really makes me appreciate that those guys must have spent a lot of time getting set up to do those drone shots. And we're a little more focused usually on riding and not so much on uh, shooting video. And uh, you can see here that our puddle is back. Sometimes in the summertime, this puddle will be almost entirely gone. It's really deep in the middle. So uh, we figured that out years ago, that unless you really want to spend some time in the water, just skirt the edges. One of the fun areas that we always tell people about is this area behind the sand pit. So if you get to that little sand pit on the Scotch Road and you go over the top in the back, you'll see there's a trail that leads out and if you keep following that trail, eventually it will take you to Black Lake. And here you can see Black Lake. And on the left-hand side of Black Lake is this really nice road that skirts along the side of the lake. And eventually that takes you to this big water crossing. So that's also one of the spots we've been going to for years. And if you look at some of our old videos, you'll see that Black Lake has claimed a lot of bikes because uh, if you fall over, it's pretty easy to flood your bike out there. So we goofed around with the drone a little more, and then it was time to pack up and head back out onto the trail. So we continued down the Scotch Road, and as you can see, more carnage on the sides of the road so uh yep 
things were definitely changing around here and uh, later on I went on the internet and I was sniffing around and I could see that a lot of this land had been subdivided into lots that are now for sale. So, um, this was going to be a, a much busier street and at some point what's going to happen too is they're just going to improve this road to the point where it's just not going to be very interesting to ride on anyways. A little farther along we came to what we call the gratuitous water crossing and this is a spot where there's this uh, interesting little water crossing. One side has this kind of steep rock face that leads down into the water and the other side has this little climb you can see on the right here and right beside it is a bridge which is why we call it the gratuitous or the unnecessary water crossing. So we had a little chat and uh, nobody seemed super excited uh, about potentially getting all wet so we decided not to do the water crossing but across the river on the other side is a little piece of an abandoned rail line so we did decide to swing a Yui and go check that out. We saw some guys who were working on a bike they had a bunch of the plastic off uh, but they didn't seem to need any help and they waved us on so we continued on our way and here you can see the old abandoned rail line because there's a mine somewhere near here and this used to be the uh, rail line that connected it to the main railway line and you can see the water levels pretty high here's the water crossing where Riley went for a swim It, I'm not interested. Yeah, me neither. Why, like, is but it it's that interesting deep? how much erosion there's been here since last year. Oh yeah? Yeah, like this was the edge of this used to be there. Lots of changes, but yeah, I didn't bring my I bought those seal skin socks. I bought the big high uh, waterproof socks. Okay. But I did not put them on today, so I have no interest <laughs> <laughs> in getting soaked. And now we got to turn around. Yeah, we have no choice to cross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, if this had been many years ago, A, we would still be playing in that puddle back at the little sand pit going <laughs> uh, So we got to the first water crossing. And once again, after a little foot reconnaissance and a little chit chat, we decided that no one was super excited about getting wet because this trail if you follow it down takes you across the uh, the pipes that we call it which is another spot where the water would be pretty high this time of the year and it would just dump you out behind the sand pit so we've done this trail many times so we decided to uh, stay dry and keep on trucking a little farther down the trail we met up with our friend who had crashed earlier and he had managed to reconnect with his buddies so all seemed well there when i first started doing the scotch road years ago this hill climb used to be one of the gnarlier parts of the ride but as you can see now it's quite tame a couple of i hesitate to call them cottages a couple of big houses have been built up here so this area has seen a lot of gravel put down but once you get past those houses the trail kind of reverts back to the way it was and gets a little rougher and a little more interesting of our favorite roads it's not a super challenging road but it's always a fun ride is the Chemin de la Rivière Rouge which is a road that follows the Rivière Rouge and uh, it's certainly doable in any kind of vehicle you could do this in a car uh, but it's a nice flowing road and for a lot of it you've got the river off to one side 
Sometimes with the water's really high, parts of this road will actually be underwater. A little farther down the road, we came to a farm, and on the left, there was actually some llamas. And I guess the isolation had been a little harder on some of us than others. So Ivan uh, felt compelled to go and speak to the llama. Hello. 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 You gonna spit on me? Hello. You're a curious animal. It was kind of a strange feeling, first of all, just to be out in the world. Uh, all of us, luckily, were in positions where we were able to work from home. So for the past months, we'd all been locked in our respective basements, doing Zoom meetings and uh, basically hibernating. So now here we are out in the world and the rules weren't super clear on what we could do and we weren't sure what was going to be open. So we went by a few of our usual haunts and everything was closed. At one point we saw a couple of public security officers. So we stopped to ask them what was open and they told us that uh, basically the only kind of fast food joint was out of town and uh, gave us directions to this hamburger hot dog stand. Sure enough, a couple of kilometers outside of town was this uh, hamburger stand that was open. The uh, provincial police were there, so we took that as a sign that uh, I guess what we were doing wasn't breaking any rules. It was that uh, weird COVID situation where you had to go inside, order, wait outside. Then they would call your number. You, had, you could go in and pick up your food, but there was no dining actually inside the building. So you had to eat outside in the parking lot. After lunch, we decided we would head down to this place called Fort West. And Fort West is a paintball facility. A lot of the times when we do the Classique, which is the first big ride of the year, that's where lunch is. And the reason it's there is because right behind Fort West is access to some really good trails. So we took this little twisty piece of pavement, which was fun, and that eventually takes us to Fort West, which is a good spot where you can... Uh, you know, grab something to eat or get a drink or take a break. And then right behind Fort yeah, West is access farm. to this Holy whole crap. nice trail network. It, it looks uh, pretty uh, damaged. <laughs> There's a couple of different ways out of Fort West here. You could keep going through their parking lot and follow the hydro line. And that leads you into a bunch of trails. Uh, but we usually like to do this where you cut straight across this field and there's this big hill climb and you never know what you're going to get year to year. Some years it's not bad, other years it's really rutted and washed out. This used to be a huge mud bog and oh boy, seems to be a lot of ruts. Okay Mark, let's go. Front tire is a street tire, rear tire is not too bad. Once again, the usual caveat, the GoPro makes everything seem flat and level. This is actually a pretty decent hill climb. And there's a spot up here where you can see there's a wash out there on the left. Some years that's really been a big trench. And we're riding along with Ivan now and he's tractoring up in the 690. Yeah, it is bumpy. bag but uh, all of us made it up without too much drama a little farther along on what is usually one of the easiest parts of the trail we came to a spot where there was a washout and even though it wasn't super deep the banks were quite steep but we weren't the first people to come through here so luckily someone had bushwhacked a bypass through the left so off we went Ivan, if I think if you had enough speed. 
Yes. It's always a question of speed. But right now it's a bit of a lack of. You could go there. Here comes Mark to save the day. Give her! <laughs> That was the opposite of Giver. That was Gaver. Here we see Mark on the Africa Twin. Mark was taking stuff pretty easy with that new knee. And there I think he just uh, didn't quite commit enough. Got to admit for a stock exhaust, that is a nice sounding bike. And he was spinning, so a quick tug on the old crash bars. And you can see the tires he's got on there aren't super aggressive, which wasn't helping his case much either. You can see Ivan still has his road book on. Ivan has this bike configurable for a bunch of different setups, and this is still his, uh, his road book rally setup he has on there now. And after that, it was pretty much smooth sailing. This is a really nice bunch of trails. A lot of these trails are set up for the uh, snowmobile guys in the winter so uh, this is the perfect stuff for the bigger bikes there's nothing along this trail network other than you know perhaps that first initial hill climb where if it's in rough shape can be a bit tough the rest of this is easily done on pretty much any bike even with the uh, not super aggressive tires there's a few hill climbs that are a bit rocky and have little steep sections, but there's nothing that's insurmountable. And even on, even on bikes that uh, don't have the greatest, uh, you know, traction, whatever, certainly if you're riding in a group, there's nothing along here that you couldn't overcome with a little pushing and tugging. Some of these trails are called the Jack Rabbit Trail. And uh, I think Ivan explains it here in his helmet. So we're coming up here onto uh, the Jackrabbit Road. Named, a uh, whole bunch of bikes. Named after the uh, famous cross-country skier, uh, Jackrabbit Johansson. So, so that's where the name of the Jackrabbit Road came from. It's actually a road now, I'm guessing back in the day it was probably more of a trail. And now it's actually being widened because they're doing uh, a new hydro line coming up through this area. So they had to open up and fix up the road further down they, uh, so the trucks could get in and out more uh, efficiently. So, a bit of history here. Jack Rabbit Johansson. Like a lot of places in Quebec, a lot of the trail network runs down these power lines because the hydro company keeps those power lines cut and they usually have some sort of a road going through there so they can do maintenance. And this was a first for us. We came across some of these off-road buggies, which I've seen on YouTube, but I've never actually seen any of these in Quebec, these big jacked up off-road vehicles. Although we have been down some trails where we suspected they had been there before us because man, when those guys chew up a hill climb, uh, they really do some damage and pull up a lot of big loose rocks and stuff so we'd seen their uh, footprints i guess you could call it but that's the first time we'd actually seen the buggies here you can see some more parked vehicles uh, i didn't show you all the vehicles we drove by but when we start seeing tons of vehicles those guys i think were on bicycles we saw some trucks with ATV trailers. Anyways, anytime we see vehicles parked, we go on a little more of high alert because it usually means we're sharing the trail with other users. Normally it wouldn't be this busy, but I think this was one of the first weekends where we were legally allowed to leave our zone. Uh, leading up to this, it had actually been against the law, uh, certainly very heavily frowned upon to leave your zone and some of the areas actually had uh, police roadblocks and one of the spots where we crossed the river from Hawkesbury just before we get to the Scotch Road apparently right there near Highway 50 for a while there was police cars asking people where they were from so I think the reason there was a little more traffic than normal is because everyone was finally able to get out of their cage Here you can see a bunch more cars. This is a trailhead for a hiking trail. 
and normally there would not be this many people parked on the road. And then for you conspiracy theory types, on the left here is some fenced in area with these big satellite dishes, so insert your conspiracy of choice as to what they're doing there. We started looking for somewhere to grab a drink or a cup of coffee or something. We came across this place which was open. The parking lot was entirely full of cruisers. And the first thing we noticed was that uh, nobody was social distancing or doing whatever. So we just decided to uh, find somewhere else to go. In the end, we decided to head back to Mark's cottage and have a social distance beer. So we fell into convoy behind Mark, and once we got close to his place, he led us back through the single track on his secret entrance route. And then we uh, sat down to have a cold one. We eventually left Mark's place. Mark stayed up at his country place. Ivan and I blasted down a little more dirt and eventually had to do some slab to get home. Um, and that was it for the ride. Hope you liked the video. This was the first ride of 2020. Despite COVID and everything else that happened, the 2020 season was a really good season. So there's going to be a lot more videos coming out. So if you like the video, please hit like and hit that subscribe button. And then when a new video does come out, and I know a lot of you complain that it's not that often, but at least if you hit that subscribe button and toggle on the little alarm bell so that when a new video comes out, you'll get notified. You'll be the first people to know. If you could please leave us a comment below. And if you have any questions about anything in the videos, about the bikes, the GPS, the gear we use, feel free to ask us here on YouTube or head over to our Facebook page and you can certainly chat with us there. You can also go to awesomeplayers.com and there you can find our email address if you'd really like to have a, a little more direct contact. And at awesomeplayers.com you can hit on the order tab and you can buy Awesome Players patches or stickers. So uh, thanks for watching yet another small adventure of the Awesome Players Off-Road Motorcycle Club. Thanks for watching. What's up, Chief? Not much. We spent mostly outside. Say goodbye. Bye-bye.